uh, I have an M1 Mac Mini. Super mm -hmm. happy with it. It's it goes faster than my octa core Intel laptop, but I'm mm -hmm. shocked at how fast it goes. Um, yeah. Anyway, I upgraded the latest. Yeah, that's good to hear that. My my wife got it. We haven't gotten it yet, but we ordered a 10 core uh, Mac Pro 14 inch oh, nice. for her. She has like a she has like a nine year old laptop. So it's there was a column in there. <laughs> there was a column in the New York Times yesterday about how uh, how great that processor is. I'm like, really? The New York Times is like having fanboy articles about CPUs? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be bleed over because there. I think there is a fanboy at New York Times on Apple. So uh, anything to say anything good, I guess. But yeah. All right. Well, we're at seven, so we should probably stop chatting about laptops and right and i see uh ying zen's online ying jen's online too she's been for a while so we can just start okay yeah um okay yeah okay good morning everyone buenos dias for those of you who are uh pining for madrid uh and happy veterans day this is the note well i know you've seen it a lot in the other ones the crux of it is uh, you need to uh, comply with all these IETF rules, including uh, declaration of any IPR you know about related to work in the IETF, and your attendance of the meeting constitutes participation. Uh, the other one people have asked to call out is the code of, code of conduct. I don't think we've had too much problems with that out of the uh, out of our working group uh we haven't had but um that's also we're supposed we're we're uh obliged to treat everybody with respect we have a few rfcs the night the 9088 and 9089 are kind of germane to one that's being proposed later in the session so that's interesting these are just waiting on a decision on whether to wait for the BFD Yang biz, that's nine, RFC 9127. There's a long conversation going on in the Yang doctors, but they should publish, oh, I would hope in the next couple of months, even if we wait for the BFD Yang biz, because it's a, it's a very short, uh, very small change to the- I don't know, uh, AC, I'm not sure if we have anybody that's uh, vision impaired, but that's uh, what you were just talking about are the Yang data models for OSPF and the Yang data model for ISIS. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, sorry. Yes, no, it's okay. data models. The base, the base models, the 100 plus page uh, documents on which all the other Yang documents are, are augment. This one's pretty much done. The, in, the encoding, ISIS encodings for SRV6. Uh, we're waiting on flex algorithm and a spring document on OEM. I'm not going to say anything about the only one I'm going to say something about is the flex algorithm. We had some changes to that. We had an errata for the extended attributes, ISIS and OSPF drafts. That's an 8920 and 8919, those RFCs. And um, now that it's finally through the second working group, last call, it's waiting on John to review. Chris, the reverse metric, it's in IE, is it still in IETF last call? That kind of completed without any. Uh, I, I know, I think I got a, uh, I think John might have sent me some review comments. So I filled them out and I think we just pushed forward on that. Okay, good. Uh, good. Is that the case, John? I sent you review comments. You, um, you took care of them. Then I went to uh, IETF last call. Uh, it's, the IETF last call is probably finished by now, but I, I have that on my list of things to check up on. But it's uh, pr presumably, um, if the last call hadn't finished already, uh, it will be finished by the end of this week and we can kick it on to the next step. Great. Okay, great. We got these two SR Yang models, OSPF SR and ISIS. These are augmentations to the base. I don't put, I'm not, I wouldn't put too high a priority on these until we get the base done. I mean, we can, like, we can start, definitely start the process though. 
the distinction of these drafts is the last drafts that don't have LSR, last working group drafts that don't have LSR in the title from when we merged the working groups about five years ago. I'm not going to say really anything. Five, uh, really five we're going to cover what, what? What's that, Chris? I, it was five years ago. That's a, wow. Uh, Something like anyway. that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. We're going to cover uh, flood reduction today. I won't say anything. Uh, BFD strict mode. That's been implemented. It's pretty simple draft. I think we could we could go through this one actually pretty quickly. And. This is one we hope to get done because we have the ISI sitting waiting, uh, waiting for missed refs, refs. So we'd really like to get the OSBF B3 extensions for SRV6 done. The offers told me they're going to have an update soon. I'm not going to say anything much about any of these. We have a lot of working group documents, so we have, but we should really focus on that rather than taking on new work. Uh, we have a, the only one I'm going to say anything about is the flexible bandwidth delay and constraints. There was a, there was a discussion on the ASLA that never completed and today, I mean, I mean that, the generic metric, uh, we didn't really get through that discussion on the list, but there's a, now there's a new proposal for ASLA bit. Hopefully we can discuss whether that can resolve the controversy with the ger generic metric. And okay, we have these two documents, the prefix on reachable announcement and passive interface. That's going to be covered today as well. And so is the flooding draft. And I don't have anything to say about these documents. Okay. Anything so, to add, Chris, on, on any of the work we need to do or any of the things? I, the one yeah, thing I I'm, would like to say is I think we should focus on getting, since we have all these working group documents, is getting some of these done as opposed to getting new, taking on new work. Yeah, so uh, let's flip back. Can you flip back to the existing working group documents? Certainly. Um, page one, I guess, one of three. Yeah. So I'm curious um, if, you know, we have all these experimental ones. <laughs> Do any of the authors uh, of any of these have to, can they report, like, has it been deployed? Is, are, is anyone using them? Are they being experimented with? Um, I guess the question would go out to Wemo, Tony. Um, what was the other one? I guess the other one was Flood uh, Reflector, which we presented today. But. Yeah, it's going to be presented. That, that one has been implemented in discussions. I did an expensive review on the, that one. Is Tony yeah. Lee here? No. Okay. Shoot. Is Wemo here? No. Okay. Well, we're not going to hear anything about those then. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I guess then the, uh, the uh, I wonder if there's anything else we could say no to see if we could push some of these through. I mean, are they are any of these blocked on us? Does anybody know uh, uh, if any of these are uh, blocked on us, these working group documents? If you want to say, hey, look, pay attention to mine, you guys need to do this. Let me look at, let me look at anybody else asked for uh the reverse metric uh they've asked for uh i mean they've said it's ready for working group last call you know it's just uh the oes o ospf corollary to the existing right. IS, isis rfc uh yeah you know, okay let's do that then anybody none of the other ones have really they really asked uh, for yeah. working group last call. And there hasn't been much discussion on, on, the, on the list on as we get further on. Yep. Okay. Then I don't have okay. anything else. 
So let's see. I will. So it's I flood will, reflection. If you stop, I stop and sharing flat slides. Tony, Tony P. Can you find that little document icon? Uh, oh no, is it, is it flooding speed first? Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Is it less or Bruno? You, are you presenting less or Bruno? You're presenting your slides. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'll be presenting. Uh, yeah, so if you click on the little document. I clicked on the little document. What I don't see different? anything that I don't see anything that allows me to select. I stopped sharing, so you should be able to. It doesn't Let say. Me, I'll share oh, my screen and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like just in case. Um, let's see. So it's right here, this guy. Is that the one you clicked on? Yes. Huh. Oh, man. Okay. Well, oh, it says all the slots immediate. Oh, okay. So maybe it popped something up on your screen, but you can't see it. Um, <laughs> that makes it grant, difficult. Please, oh, I had to grant. I found it. I found it. Yeah. Okay. I have to yeah, click this. Yeah, we didn't have to do that because the chairs automatically had access to share. Can you click the green thing? It's saying already granted on I him have... in queue. Oh, I have to quit the screen share. Okay, now I'll try again. There yeah, we go. Ah, All right. It's, it's role based access control. Yep. Uh, my audio I'm getting is fuzzy. Is anybody else getting that? I mean, I might re reset my audio. That sounds fine to me, Chris. Okay, I'll reset then. Go ahead, Les. All right. Um, okay, so this is an update on uh, fast flooding. Um, we've now produced a merged draft. There were formerly uh, two drafts. And so we have lots of authors. Um, I hope we'll be able to keep that many authors going forward since everybody's contributed. Uh, so you're telling me I can move the slides by doing what? Click an arrow, oh. Oh, your arrow key. Oh, or... I see, I see, I see, I have the numbers, okay. So in September, uh, the authors of uh, these two drafts, uh, which we've been talking about for some time now, uh, agreed to produce a combined draft uh, that was, I believe, just before the interim meeting that we had on this topic. Uh, we have we had consensus on there are many congestion control algorithms that are possible uh, because they're implemented on the DX side. Um, so it's not necessary for. Oh. It's bigger now. Cool. Um, it's not necessary uh, that every node implement the same congestion control algorithm. Um, there is also a, a flow control aspect, depending upon what approach you take. And for flow control, uh, we do need uh, some TLVs uh, for that, that have to be supported for interoperability. And we've been debating back and forth for some time about which approach uh, is better. And we've basically decided we don't have to make that choice at this point. What we want to do is to support uh, experimental work going forward in terms of uh, how the algorithms are working. And that's what we've been talking about, uh, I think, the last couple of ITFs. And so the best way forward is to produce a combined draft that provides the tools so implementers can uh, do what they think is best. And we'll see uh, how the, uh, you know, what, 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 what the performance of the algorithms turns out to be and whether we can settle on one or whether we'll just simply uh, allow for multiple in the future. So this is not a technical presentation. This is uh, basically just a, uh, a quick overview of the combined draft content. Um, 
and I've done this basically by picking the uh, key sections in the document and describing the content that's in these sections. So we have a section, uh, an introductory section and the discussion of historical behavior. Um, historically, we've flooded at 33 LSPs per second or thereabouts. Um, and this talks about the goals of faster flooding, which is something that uh, we, we all pretty much agreed upon. So we took some text from both of the drafts um, as this was, again, a, a point of consensus. Um, there really weren't any significant issues in uh, putting this text together. Section four discusses a new flooding parameters TLV, uh, which now contains six candidate sub TLVs. Um, the first two already were present in draft Ukraine, uh, although we've renamed them a bit. And uh, we introduced four new ones, which uh, were related to uh, uh, things that the you know one or or, or the other algorithm uh, was making use of. Um, section five talks about some performance improvements that are needed on the receiver, uh, particularly. Uh, acknowledging uh, LSPs uh, more quickly than uh, implementations may his, uh, historically have been doing, and uh, perhaps prioritizing uh, the reception of uh, SNPs on receive uh, to assist in uh, providing faster acknowledgements. Section six, contains the description of the two algorithms that have been discussed separately in the in the different documents in the past. Um, so section 6.2 is the algorithm from draft Ukraine. Um, the, the description has been updated. Uh, 6.3 is the algorithm from draft Ginsburg. Uh, that description has also been updated, uh, but they're they're fundamentally uh, you know the the same two algorithms that were previously in separate documents. And we added uh, an appendix to track changes uh, and another appendix to track open issues. Uh, at the present time, there are no open issues. Uh, we managed to resolve all of the open issues that we had during the uh, discussion of, of putting together the combined draft, um, but we'll use that to track issues in the future. And now we'd like to request working group adoption. This has been discussed uh, probably for a couple of years now. Um, and we'd like to, to move forward with, with the work. And, you know, we will, you know, the respective teams are still uh, doing uh, implementation and testing, and there'll be further reports and update to the draft in the future. I think the most important point here is if we can get quick working group adoption, then we can get uh, an early allocation for the TLV code point, which uh, we need uh, to move forward with the work. And that's it. Well, I guess. Something happened to the audio. You see, we started to hear your voice and then it cut off after, I guess. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to, we're definitely going to do, given the interest and in the, you know, the, the number of meetings we've had on this, uh, this has been probably the most discussed topic on the working group list for a long time. We're going to do working group adoption immediately. The one question is whether we do standard tracker or exp experimental, I think uh, we'll, 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 uh, we'll include that in the adoption. We're kind of running short on time. We didn't, uh, uh, we didn't uh, uh, allocate that much time for this, but uh, I mean, but we're, we'll do that shortly after the ITF, the adoption call.
but anyway, good work. I mean, to, to everybody on the design on on both of the drafts and uh, the discussion. And I, I I read it. It looks ready for adoption. I, I'll probably have some more comments, but purely editorial. I don't see anybody else in the queue. I guess we can go on to the next uh, presentation. Tony, you want to put yours? load your slides, hit the, or Les, can you stop sharing? And Tony, do you want to share? Yeah, let's try this experiment. All let's right. I... Pushing something. Um... Okay, do it, do it again. I think I, let's see. Oh yeah, look, it looks even, um, I, grant, I granted him. I had to reboot my machine, apparently. Okay. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Something works. Um, yes, so PDF, you don't really see the title. It doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, it's the update on what's going on with the flood reflection draft, uh, version 4. Mm. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, four came out. That was based on some discussions and implementation deployment experience. Uh, thanks, especially to AC who really fine comped the stuff. I don't think how much was on the list, how much was actually authors and AC. So you know, multiple section have been changed, clarified, added. So substantially nothing changed, but a lot of clarification has been put into the document. Mm, more detailed changes. So glossary, always a nice thing. And then um, we broke out and clarified the section about the two deployment modes, which you know we call no tunnel deployment. So basically, no shortcuts uh, and L1 tunnel deployment. So basically, you shortcut the thing with full or partial mesh of L1 shortcuts, and you use uh, uh, basically the tunnels as next stops. Um, what we also threw in based on uh, already, you know, discussion about some future stuff and implementation um, experience, uh, we threw in the tunnel type discovery because so far there was only a discovery uh, of whether, you know, where the endpoints are and who is doing what role, but there was no description what kind of tunnel can you set up if you want to set up automatic tunnel. And thankfully now we have the RFC 9012, which deals in extensive with extensive in extensive detail with the subject. Uh, so the uh, acceptable tunnel endpoints, including the caps and all the other, you know, jazz that you need to get it done, uh, are being uh, announced. And a flag basically shows up whether the endpoint is uh, flood reflector adjacency or an L1 shortcut endpoint. Um, and of course, you know, you can run the stuff uh, just fine with statically configured tunnels or any, you know, tunnel solution that, that you prefer to, you know, this auto discovered stuff. All right. Um, uh, even more detail. Um, that's mostly implementation um, and deployment feedback. Uh, the must of multiplicities of TLVs has been moved mostly to shoot and the violation should be locked and clarified that only the first you know, instance should be used. I think it was based maybe even on ACES comments. The other interesting thing is that we added the sub TLVs uh, for discovery of uh, the different roles and the tunnel endpoints. We uh, moved that uh, not only in L1, but also into L2 as uh, adver adver advertisement, as the scope of advertisement. Um, that's simply based on the observation that some people desire to run it with underneath not having ISIS L1, but possibly something else. So the advertisement cannot fly in uh, L1, they should fly in L2. Um, then, um, ISIS metric on all flood reflector adjacencies should be uniform. That's basically from deployment. Uh, they don't have to be, but it will save you potentially a lot of trouble if you keep the you know, flood reflector adjacencies uniform in terms of uh, metrics distances. Um, then again, deployment and implementation, mm, it wasn't entirely clear that within an area, ISIS area, the cluster ID should be uniform. Um, that does not prevent you technically to run multiple cluster in an area, um, 
but it still prevents, I mean, it was pretty clear in the draft, but on the implementation experience, you know, we pointed at stuff, uh, we made it even more clear that a single client uh, has to use the same cluster ID. So the only way he can interact with another cluster would be through a normal L2 adjacency with another client in another cluster. Mm. Uh, and we clarified also that the cluster ID is used to actually check adjacency formation uh, if you decide to be, you know, a client or a reflector. Um, right, so um, alt ends. So yes, this is implemented and in deployment, um, what we see is that the numbers in terms of additional scalability you can get with it are uh, pretty much what we expected based on kind of simulation theoretical work, thinking through the stuff before implementation. And we also see that um, uh, it does not require forklift of the network, but you can actually move over without uh, losing capacity. So basically one node at a time if you do it correctly. Um, technically speaking, or in terms of substance, there were no significant changes, right? Except all this clarification work that I uh, pointed out. And I think again, that this is ready for last call. Uh, I do not think we'll have any substantial additions or changes. Um, and currently ongoing work, which is already spinning out of it, is the BGPLS, which is of course the next thing um, that is needed, that has been introduced in IDR, uh, this meeting, Jordan is doing most of this work there. And uh, we also starting on auto flood reflection, um, which is the same thing as auto VPN in Rift, which basically means that you can bootstrap uh, routers without any configuration whatsoever, and you end up, um, if you build uh, some, you know, some variation of a claw network, you end up with a fully configured claw uh, plus uh, the flood reflection already automatically being configured on top of it. Um, that's the last one that I have, I think, yes. So from my side, uh, or from the author's side, the outstanding request is to go with this thing for a last call and see whether more things pop up. If anybody has implementation wants to interrupt and so on and so on, as usual, uh, pretty welcome. Implementation is relatively simple uh, from our experience. Um, so, you no, know, highly encouraged. Thanks, I'm done. Um, so, with the contributor hat on, not the chair hat. Uh, I uh, reread the draft yesterday and had a couple uh, thoughts. Mm -hmm. Have you considered, um, you know, uh, one of the obvious ways to deploy it is with the with the um, tunnels uh, between the L1, L2s for forwarding. Um, have you considered like just they automatically working? You know, like they're auto set up, not even signaled at all, but you know, just because of the fact that they're once they join up with the reflector, then they just, you, you know, they, they can program themselves to accept um, encapsulated traffic from the other clients. Yeah, right. So that's what the discovery TLD is there for. Okay. Right? So I didn't, get, when I read, you know, when I just read it, I didn't get that, you know, there wasn't anything sort of saying it, you don't have to signal this. I, I thought it, it was talking about signaling it, but. Um, well, depend what we think. Uh... Uh, of uh, signaling, but basically what happens is you send these discovery sub TLDs which tell the others what the roles are, and you can optionally and, uh, add to that uh, sub sub TLDs which describes the tunnel endpoint, and say, look, this is the tunnel endpoint for either flood reflector adjacency or for a shortcut, and then there is basically a simple explanation what's the tie breaking, who is initiating, right? And based on that, the tunnels can be automatically set up, but something has to set up the tunnels unless you support it, you know, st statically pre-provisioned tunnels, which we also support. And I don't see much more to be done there. No, that I mean, that's what I was thinking though, is that uh, not even, like if, if you knew who the other clients were, you could automatically, as, as a receiver, right? You could, re you could set up yeah, um, but that's what's happening, right? So in L1, you will see all the other guys and they will show up as clients in the same cluster ID and they will show up the shortcut endpoint. So you can build up those tunnels to them. 
th that, that's what I'm getting at is that you don't yeah. even need to signal it. You could just say, because I'm part of this thing, I've got it configured to auto tunnel, right? And so I'll just accept packets encapsulated. Yeah, but that you have client. to know what type of tunnel uh, is supported and what is the endpoint address of the other guy, uh, right? And that's exactly yeah, so that, what you plot, right? So that's what I was getting at is that that, that up front, um, rather than signaling tunnels, just saying what type of tunnel, and then everyone just does it. Anyway, it's just a just was a thought about. Well, so see the tunnel thing. You know, uh, if you talk to four customers, what tunnel they prefer, they got five. You get five to six answers, right? So that <laughs> that that was exactly the discussion we were having, and we tried to steer them towards you know GRE, and you know every tunnel has its work and silicon support problems, and frankly. The most advanced customers, they they end up preferring the no tunnel option, and that's why we work on that stuff most extensively. So we suggested the whole thing a while ago, and uh, the most sophisticated people actually reject the tunnel uh, uh, option, the short term, for you know lots of reasons, which are often non-obvious, right? Operational, silicon reasons, and so on. So I have just a follow-up question on the tunnels. You know, uh, you in the draft, I think you might have added the TTZ comparison. It, it did get me thinking, you know, the TTZ gives you a full mesh of adjacencies and, and you're cutting down, you know, that's the main advantage here is the, the adjacency, um, the reflector keeps your adjacency hub and spoke. Yeah, yeah, the L2, um, yes. Did, did they get away? I don't remember. And so I'm asking you about their draft, but do they require tunnels between their L1, L2, for, between their TTZ edge? Or how did they solve that forwarding problem? Did they do uh, the forwarding out? problem, they have underneath the full full mesh of tunnels, oh, which okay. this so draft same, has same as thing. well, right? It's just yeah, hidden. Yeah. That's yeah, that's okay. the difference, right? This draft basically hides the full mesh by you know, showing the whatever, a double star. And that's architecturally really, you know, the only difference and the rest is kind of, you know, mechanics and little smart, you know, curriculum and so on. Um, uh, what is, of course, drastically different is the no tunnel option, right? But this is far more sophisticated to deploy. I mean, this is a much sharper knife, albeit uh, uh, no uh, um, um, how should I put it? Um, it's it's very appealing, right? Because you get rid of all the tunnel stuff and you get very good, you know, uh, properties in terms of scalability, but you have to know what you're doing when you start to flood all the L2 into L1 and L1, you know, out in terms right. of frequencies. Yeah, Let's, but uh, it, it works, yes. Let me, uh, Wemo's, he's not in the queue, but he's put in the chat, TTZ does not use tunnels. Yeah, okay. Yeah, can, I, uh, can I speak for uh, four seconds? I yeah. For OSPF TTZ, for the TTZ edges uh, for the connection, uh, they, they don't use uh, tunnels. They use the sorted pass because uh, that's uh, uh, for the forwarding from one edge to another edge, TTZ edge. They just Is use that because pass. that's because you that's because you so you advertise all the outside reachability into the TTZ then? Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Okay. That's why the advertisement is for is full mesh. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I got you. So, so you don't use tunnels, but you do have to advertise all. In this case, in, in the, the context here, it would be you would be advertising all the L two into the L one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. I don't want to take up any more time. Um, we do have a lot of slop. We have like twenty minutes of slop, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I uh, remember the TTC differently, but it's a while since I read it. You know, when there were initial discussions ages ago when I was in New Mexico about you know why the whole thing would loop, and then the full mesh came up and so on. Um, yeah, but you know, this this thing was specifically built to scale up L2, right? So we could yeah, yeah. No. plot all the stuff into L2, and then the L1 does underneath what L1 needs to do. Yes. All right. So. Thanks. Hope that was enlightening to a point. I think the draft is now very, very detailed. Um, if somebody <laughs> wants to attempt an implementation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is AC speaking as a working group chair. I, I went, we went through uh, some iterations and uh, we handled all the things that myself and other people had uh, said needed to be clarified. And I think it's ready too. I'd like some of the long time ISIS developers like uh, 
Stefano uh, Shraddha, Les uh, uh, Ahmed, and uh, some of the others. I would like would be good if you would uh, review it as well. Oh, Bruno and Bruno. Yeah, well, why don't we go hunt down Hank Schmidt? Where's he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's go back again. Or I heard, yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, Nokia. I think. Oh, true, true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, we, yeah, we but, can take but, it to I, the list. I, I, it sounds like we'll do. We'll we'll put a working group last call out then on the list. Yes. Cool. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. Shrada's next, right? Yes. Shrada, can you load your slides? Okay. We're good. We're, we just aren't used to hitting the green button, I think. Yeah. I did it. Are you talking? You, you're muted. You have to click the little mic icon. There. Shrada. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Now we can. Yep. Okay. Uh, so I'll be presenting the application specific link attributes, uh, any application bit on behalf of my uh, co authors. Uh, so we'll look at what problem we're trying to solve with this. Uh, we'll look into some of the details of protocol extensions and how is the backward compatibility handled. So um, the problem statement is that um, network operators may want certain link attributes to be used by all current and future applications. So and we have many examples of uh, uh, you know, such attributes and how the network evolved over many years. So, uh, and we um, uh, we have made ASLA mandatory for some applications uh, such as uh, FlexAlgo. So ASLA allows for uh, um, an attribute advertisement where link attributes um, applicable to one applications or some applications or all the applications currently defined. But there's a limited provision to advertise attributes that are applicable to any application which are currently defined or going to be defined in future. Um, uh, so the um, reason why uh, we call it limited uh, um, support is because um, RFC 8919 and 8920, they do not allow application to use attributes from zero length. So there is a zero length SABM. Uh, if you uh, advertise attributes under that zero length SABM, then any other, uh, uh, then uh, any application can use it unless uh, any the application has any other attribute advertised uh, with an application bit set. So during a, a discussion in the mailing list, um, there were opinions that more granular control over attribute advertisement for any application versus application specific is useful. Like some attribu attributes, operators want to design it uh, in an application independent way so that those attributes are always available for any application that are currently defined or in defined in future. And some specific applications may be um, um, designed to be used in an application specific way. So this, uh, we're trying to solve this problem where, uh, uh, you know, th this can be, um, uh, this control can be provided in ASLA. So the details of protocol uh, extension. So the, the so any, any bit is a standard bit mask uh, and it's a bit number four. Uh, so that implies that uh, any application, so any attribute um, advertised under this uh, can be used by uh, any application. So how to achieve uh, backward compatibility? Um, uh, so 
obviously a node that does not understand a bit it cannot process uh, the uh, attributes uh, under uh, uh, under the advertisement which has an a asla tlv which has an a bit set so it ignores that uh, and processing of the other bits uh, that remains as per uh, 8919 and 8920 and this draft mandates that if same attribute is advertised under asla with a bit and uh, uh, there is an advertisement under asla with specific application bit set the one which ha which is uh, application must use the one which which has the application bit set i know that takes the precedence uh, so this is in order to um, avoid uh, uh, so let's say some nodes are upgraded they suddenly start advertising uh, attributes with a bit set um, and uh, the older nodes they will pick up attributes under the application specific um, so that's the reason even the ones which understand the a bit will have to uh, pick the uh, attributes which are under a bit uh, under uh, the application bit set so until all nodes are upgraded to support a bit obviously the nodes won't be able to use the uh, attributes which are advertised under a bit and hence uh, uh, the, the upgraded nodes also would have to advertise in in a, the attributes um, uh, under a bit as well as under uh, application specific bit set and the processing of the sabm with zero length continues to follow 8919 and 8920 no, no nothing is this draft doesn't modify any of those procedures yeah request uh, uh, further review and comments uh, on the draft and one uh, and also request uh, working group adoption and one more thing i want to clarify based on the uh on ac's comment uh, in the beginning of the meeting today so this is quite independent from generic metrics so this is just trying to uh, provide for for network operators who want to design certain attributes in an application independent manner and uh, advertise them this is just giving that that possibility uh so that those attributes can be advertised in an application independent way inside asla uh yeah that's the clarification any questions comments i guess you're, at the, you're yeah. at the top okay yeah i i realized that th this didn't get us off the hook for the uh for the discussion of the continued discussion of the ger generic metric uh the one question i have if you have the a bit set and other bits you're you're going to use the whatever is advertised in that attribute in in either case so what's the advantage over the a bit over the zero length uh uh bit mask i mean you, you know the applicant what i forget the acronyms for them what's the advantage of that i couldn't i couldn't see that yeah so the difference is that um so let's say if you uh, the you if you have designed one attributes let's say admin group in an application independent way so in in, the, in your network right so red color means one gig link and that means uh, this red color is any application can use this red color this admin group so admin group is an attribute which is designed in the network to to be used by any application so now you can advertise it under a bit and there are some other applications um, some other attributes that you want to design it in an application specific way for example you want there is some let's say some bandwidth related uh, attribute that that you want to design it and advertise it in uh, in an application specific way so so different for srt different for flex algo and so on so you can you can do that i mean you can um, advertise that one under the bandwidth one under uh, the application specific bit set and the uh, the um, admin group under a bit set uh, so whereas if you advertise um, uh, a, the admin group under sabm with all sabm with length 0 uh, and then for let's say for flex algo and srt you have advertised bandwidth now you cannot use the admin group 
um, uh, for um, uh, for SRT and Flex Algo because they have the uh, application bit set. So basically, it's giving you an uh, opportunity to advertise attributes in in an application independently on a per attribute basis. So so the, to to the long story short, because this is related to my question. Sorry to jump in front of you, Les, but. Uh, my question is the same except different, which is I understand why you did this because the zero length can't be used the minute you use a non-zero length. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Like yeah. so, one attribute uses zero length, everything's golden. Okay. You do another attribute with a specific, and then all of a sudden you have to stop listening to that zero length. To me, that yeah, seems exactly. like a fault in the original design. Like, why don't we just fix that? Like, why do why is it even that way? And maybe Les can answer that. Yeah, I will let Les answer that question. Maybe I can follow up now? after Les's answer. Is it my turn now, Chris? Yes. Yes. Okay. So um, we, we've had extensive discussion about the technical issues uh, on the list, um, you know, including the, the points that, uh, you know, AC and Chris are, are asking about. Um, I don't want to go into that here. Um, I don't think we have the time to, to go back and forth. Um, my the, the point I want to make is is kind of a, a much larger point. the The function of the ITF and the function of our working group is to produce uh, a standard that supports interoperability. We have done that with the SLRFCs 8919, 8920. Uh, the authors of this document. Uh, have decided that a certain portion of, uh, you know, the way to support all applications or any application, if you will, um, is not to their liking. And so they've proposed an alternate form of advertising this. The two definitions, the definition, the zero length definition that exists in the ASLA RFCs and uh, the ABIT that's defined here are not compatible. Uh, despite uh, what, what Shredda has presented. Um, in a real deployment, all of the nodes that are operating in the network have to advertise things the same way in order to understand each other, or they have to advertise things both ways uh, in order to make sure that, uh, you know, if a node's supporting one strategy versus another, that everything is understood. This now puts us in the position of instead of having a standard, which everybody can uh, uh, use to support interoperability, we now have multiple published solutions, uh, you know, some of which are favored by one set of people and some of which are favored by another set of people. This uh, introduces a lot of interoperability issues. It requires vendors to do multiple implementations of the same functionality, not because uh, one of the solutions is deficient, but simply because some folks have decided we prefer to do it this way. And, and uh, this to me does not serve the industry. Yeah, okay, so this, me, this might me, be getting this is, a little this bit, is a, this is, yeah. yeah, it's a, this philosophy, okay. We're not, it's requesting working group adoption, right? I mean, we haven't published two competing standards. This, right? Standard. So your point is this, your point is fine, right? But it, but we're not like breaking the internet, right? They they what you're saying is they're proposing a solution and it's not compatible. That definitely should go. That should go into what the working group does, right? I mean, no, we don't want to publish two doc two things that compete with each other or cause problems. So that's a great okay. point. But you know, let's not take that too far, because we this is just a draft, right? <laughs> so that's a reason not to uh, go with it, in your opinion. Correct. Right? Okay, great. Um, so I, we're out of time on this. Uh, the question that I was asking, I guess you're saying go read the list, dummy, um, is why the zero length can't be fixed. It sounds a little broken, but I'll, we can do that on the list since we're out of time. Um, and, and you're yeah, sure. And with this, just, just one comment with respect to Les's uh, uh, observation. Um, so I think it's not right that, uh, you know, this, uh, the two solutions are not interoperable. Um, 
uh, how they can interrupt has been uh, discussed just now in the previous slide. I mean, it's not clear we can discuss again, uh, but I do think that uh, this very much interrupts with uh, um, whatever has been deployed in 89, 19, and 89, well, you know, 20. It just I gives mean, this is, this another is option. Let's do it on the list. Because, I mean, showing something doesn't interrupt is pretty easy, right? I mean, and we can all technically look at that and look at the example. I mean, you, you usually can show an example, right? So if Les is right, he'll throw an example out and we'll all go, yep, Les is right. And if Les can't come up with an example, then you're right. That's easy enough, right? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the one I'm thing sure that stuck we can out take in, it to the list. Yeah, we'll take it to the list. It stuck out in my mind. It said when everybody is upgraded and there was no nothing in the protocol to do that, it seemed like it was an operational uh, interoperability and not a protocol interoperability. But anyway. Okay, uh, who's up next? Arjun. Gian or Aijun? Puum, oh, yeah. Puum and passive. Okay, so we need to drop, I think I can just knock this down. Aijun, okay. So you, you hit your little document icon, you did, and I hit your green and you get it. Okay. So make sure you hit your mic, little mic icon, so we can hear you. There you go. Oh, you're sharing your screen. No, no, no. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Click the, click the little document right next to the monitor. Between the hand and the monitor, there's a little document icon, Aijun. Click that. We can't hear you either. But yeah, and I can't hear you talking yet, so that might also be another problem. Okay, that doesn't look like the icon, but okay. Yeah, that's not the right thing. Click next to it. Do you see the little document? Okay, never What's mind. the second one? It, it's oh. okay, I guess. We, you can share your screen. But we can't hear you, so. Um, can you uh, talk? You have to click the mic icon. Yeah, you have to click the mic. You're, you're muted. Okay, say something. <laughs> Hello? Yes. Now we can hear you. Uh, so, uh, uh, I tried to share a screen, but it did not work, I think. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't do the screen. You click the document. See, right next you see to the, the monitor up there? You see oh, the not document? the screen, but the document. Okay. Yeah, just uh, go ahead and present. Okay, or don't. Yeah, it's going to say you're okay. You have to stop doing the screen. I'll do that for you. Hang on. Yeah. And then that one works. There we go. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. Hello? Did it work now? Yes. Yes, okay. I put it down to 12 minutes. We're starting to run on a yeah, slot. So, so let, 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 uh, let me start the, the instruction. Uh, I, I will instruct two, two documents. The first thing is the brief unreasonable announcement mechanism. This, uh, I think this has been discussed intensively on the main list. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, uh, we are familiar with the scenario. So uh, I just describe the solution directly. The um, PM solution, uh, there are uh, the, the main, the main um, step is, is open, receive in the node link failure information, uh, which is perfect in the, in the range of the under type summary address, the ABR or L, L1 or L2 
to border router will uh, generate one new summary address with the failure prefix on associated, but set its originator information to null. And we use the uh, uh, IPv4 and IPv6 soft router uh, in IS and OSPF. So uh, such uh, summary message will be flooded across, across the boundary a normal OSPF and IS procedure. Uh, so uh, uh, we, um, for node C failure scenario, so one node within really, really one area receives the such message from all of its ABRs. It will trigger the switch over of the control plane for the overly service, such as BTT or GRE tunnel or tunnel service uh, that is run on top of it. Uh, for link fa failure, or, uh, or only some of the ABR uh, can reach the prefix, that is we call the, the network partition scenario. So uh, uh, then we all, when only some of the ABR can't reach the failure prefix, the ABR that can reach the prefix uh, will advertise under the specific route to this uh, PM prefix. So this uh, procedure is the same as the uh, RIP. Uh, <clears throat> and the uh, uh, ABR uh, will only send out the such message when all the internal router support such mechanism. Uh, and the uh, ABR can also control when to send out uh, such message based on SL-like configuration. That is to say, uh, it is uh, uh, one when some link or some link failure, but it, it is not uh, um, within the uh, interest prefix, so the ABR uh, should not uh, uh, send out such message. So it is keep uh, keep the, um, uh, the 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 original uh, performance of the IDP, and uh, uh, to achieve the. Uh, uh, the ABR know, know the capability of the all its internet internal cap, internal capability to support the uh, PM. So we add back for the capability announcement from the previous version. Uh, so then node within one area should all support uh, such mechanism uh, to ensure they act correctly based on the such information. We also add the end consideration for OSPF v2, v3, and IS. Uh, and uh, there is a uh, similar proposal uh, by uh, Les and Peter for the uh, event notification solution. Uh, we have discussed uh, the solution online or offline. And uh, uh, here, just uh, our um, uh, conclusion for the event notification solution uh, proposal proper one general event notification container within IS to deliver the positive or negative pulse event based on the flooding scope LSP RS7356. Uh, currently, uh, it is only, focused only on the same use case as the PM job. And uh, based on the discussion, we think uh, uh, for PM for and uh, <clears throat> For the current uh, use case, both solutions can achieve the same result. Uh, and uh, but for PM, the existing LTPD format and the procedure can be utilized. Uh, and the uh, the solution is the same same procedure for OSPF and ISS. And uh, we think it is uh, easy to implement, deploy, and debug in the protagonist network. And uh, there we also uh, con uh, uh, consider some misbehavior for the unsupported uh, node, but we, we have think that it, the, such misbehavior can be controlled, uh, in, <coughs> can be controlled in, in, uh, uh, in, in deployment. And uh, for even the notification solution, uh, we think it is uh, almost a similar procedure as the PM. The difference uh, lies mainly how to encode such a such message, and uh, uh, for uh, we think for a general solution, uh, uh, such general some event notification solution, it should be compared with other existing solution for the uh, positional requirement because 
it is not uh, able to for solve only the pretty unreachable announcement. Uh, and uh, we think uh, because currently there is only one use case for such a for such mechanism, we think uh, it is a mature to introduce the general pulse mechanism within IDP currently. And uh, for SPF, uh, there is another solution uh, proposed by FIMO uh, about 10 years ago. Uh, and uh, uh, we also need to consider how to uh, implement uh, such uh, event notification in OSPF and uh, in IS. So, <clears throat> uh, for action, we, we think uh, this topic has uh, uh, enough interest on the list. And uh, uh, we think it is uh, it is the time to for adoption call for this software. Okay, the, let's uh, first discuss this software, and uh, after the question, I will introduce the next one. Yeah. So <laughs> go ahead, Lars. Uh, so yeah, I will. I want to. Okay. No, less okay. is in the queue. Just let, let less go ahead. Okay, the comment I want to make, I think the discussion on the list has highlighted the fact that there's an open question as to, independent of whether we use the prefix unreachable draft or the event notification draft, as to whether this problem should be solved by the IGPs or whether it should be solved by BGP or some other way. And I think the logical way to proceed on this is to get consensus of the working group as to whether an IGP solution is desired first then after we reach consensus on that then we can start talking about which approach um, is the better approach you know and which one should be adopted yeah so uh chair hat on um they've been asking for adoption for a while um the event thing is new i agree with what you just said less in a perfect world that would be the case but then again asking for adoption is one way to answer that question it may be not the perfect way to answer that question, but um, it is one way. And uh, I mean, I I agree uh, without my chair hat on, I'm not sure we need this, right? Uh, but I, it's not for me to say by fiat. Um, we uh, AC did put something out on the list to, to try to engage people again. And I don't think a lot uh, got said. Yeah. So point, I, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, finish, Chris. And I'll... Uh, no, that that was all I was going to say. Um, it, is Ayajan has another presentation? He only has got three minutes left. I want no. to share share this, share the document. Can but cannot. Uh... You you got to share the same thing again. Yeah. Yeah. Just okay. just what he's bringing yeah. that up. I didn't I, I didn't see much support other than the offers, and I saw one non offer supporting uh, the other the event notification. So. When, so, when I, I did, but you know, I yeah. think it's fair. Uh, you know, everyone has a right to ask for an adoption, and right. You know, I I don't know. So if the, if, and everyone has a right to say we shouldn't adopt this, and these are the reasons. Um, we've sort of let it been letting it percolate to try to get people to express opinions, and without seeing a lot of negative opinions, it's it's hard not to just grant the adoption call. Tony, do you have a quick thing to say? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, re I think this is all trash canning the IGP. I mean, nothing new has been done forever because, hey, that's <laughs> not because everybody can get everywhere. Uh, one possible solution is to uh, ban or encourage maybe everyone with these kind of suggestions to go towards the service instance stuff or whatever we call it, which I think is a good idea. Just run a parallel IGP at much lower priority and don't trash the main thing that holds the whole thing together. That sounds like a great comment um, for the adoption call, <laughs> or or for have coming out before. But yeah, yeah. I, I, and as a as a working group member, I I agree with you. Okay, we got to move. He's got a minute and a half. We got a, four minutes of slop left in the entire agenda. Uh, go ahead, Eisen. Ijen, go. We can't hear you. Nope. 
It looks like you're sending audio, but we can't hear you. Ajun. Yeah. Maybe the local uh, mute button in the lower right is clicked. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Well, why don't we um, why don't we move on to the next presentation? And if we have uh, time at the end, we'll come back. Aizen, you you you've got to figure out how to get yourself unmuted. You've got a okay, different. Okay. 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 No oh, problem. now you're there. But <laughs> let's let's come back to your presentation. If if uh, I'll try to bring people in tighter um, and see if we can come back to it. Okay. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks. Sorry. Okay. So next up is Linda. <coughs> hey, can you hear me? Yep. Click, click your little document icon next to the hand. <coughs> Uh, what do you mean? Uh, you want me to present or what? Yes, you're going to present. Click the little document icon to the left of the hand <laughs> icon. Top left. There you go. There, and now you're you're in control. Oh, oh okay. Uh, you should see the slides come up momentarily. Yeah. There you go. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. Okay, thank you very much for giving this opportunity. And next page, please. You, you're, you're in control. Control, hit oh, the arrow, oh, <laughs> right? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. Uh, thank you. So this is about um, um, uh, LSR, um, uh, RSI's OSP extension for um, serving the 5G edge computing services. Um, Sorry. So I have to thank uh, Peter for helping us um, offline to shape the content, make it so much uh, uh, shorter and uh, to the point. And many thanks to other people on the mailing list discussion to help shaping this uh, um, draft. Okay. So a uh, little bit of background. Um, so this is for the edge computing environment where um, the servers are very close to the proximity of the uh, uh, 5G sites like UPF and uh, uh, PSA packet session enters. And for the mission sensitive applications, it is very common to have multiple servers um, for the same application all close together. Um, there are many use cases being discussed in 3GPP for this kind of um, um, applications and this kind of deployment. And so for the ITP domain, you may have a small set of um, 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 like routers and then the eWest router will have the um, servers, uh, edge server, uh, edge computing server directly attached to the routers. So this is the basic background. So. Um, it's very frequently anycast being used. Um, there are many benefits of using anycast. Um, basically, is to leverage the network condition to distribute the packets um, so that um, if there's changes in the UE behavior, like for example, um, uh, lots of uh, users uh, move to one location for like concert or conference call or gathering, and uh, the, ser the servers nearby the cell tower may be overbooked, uh, overutilized. And at this point, that um, like the network uh, routing distance to the others may be very very small difference. So uh, compare with the uh, utilization of the server, so that the network itself, if any cast is used, can automatically migrate the traffic to the location where um, there are uh, less utilized servers available, compute available. And also it is make it possible to eliminate the single point of failure, um, like a DNS resolver or the um, load balancer. Like typically today we have uh, the no, uh, application layer uh, load balancer, which has many servers attached behind. But to a network, there's only one address where we see the network um, uh, load balancer. 
Um, but if the condition, network con a condition to the load balancer has some issues, then impact the, the, the performance. So using any cast can resolve, can eliminate that issues. Um, also, um, many uh, clients may use uh, stale um, IP addresses. They may only retrieve the IP address once in a while. So that when they move from one cell tower to another cell tower, they may still have the old IP address. And this is um, become more acute in a 5G environment because in 4G, you don't have that much issue. 4G, maybe the entire city um, only has one uh, packet gateway. So everybody traffic, doesn't matter where you move to, um, unless you drive very far away, um, your traffic all anchored into the same um, um, ingress router to the IP network uh, or the same packet gateway. But in 5G environment, there'll be many, many um, um, those user plan functions and the packet anchor points so that uh, when user move, the, the traffic move and they uh, associate um, uh, the local network, um, lo local network routers, they were going through the different uh, ingress routers. So, so that's basically the benefit of using Anycast. And, um, and then this, uh, this particular um, um, contribution of the uh, draft is to um, bring up another layer of um, uh, matrix in compute the path, shortest path. Uh, since those, um, um, so those um, um, uh, servers, um, um, they are attached to the, the egress routers. And uh, um, like, for example, the site can have different uh, um, value or preference, and they may have different capacity. And uh, so we want to bring this information into the um, uh, IGP's uh, constraint pass compute. Okay, so the overview um, of the solution is pretty simple. Um, so one thing is the, the egress router need to advertise the site cost of the uh, in the IP prefix reachability TLV to indicate the, the value, the cost value to reach specific prefix. And, and Bear in mind that not everybody, not every service in this LDN require this preferred or specialized um, class compute, only a small set of prefix. Like for example, uh, if you use this um, AWS wavelength zone, right? If you want uh, uh, low latency service um, as, a, so, uh, as a client, they have to register their uh, service with the uh, provider. So the provider is aware of a small set of um, services or IP addresses in, in our uh, context that require a special treatment. So, so this, this is, um, and then um, we're using, uh, using the flag algorithm. There's a new flag set to indicate that for this specific prefix that you need to consider the side cost to balance the um, the actual cost to the specific prefix. So that's the um, basic overview of this. Um, and then for the um, flex algorithm definition, uh, flex of TLV, we introduced a new flag to indicate that um, um, this um, site cost matrix has to be, need to be included to deliver, uh, to derive the um, uh, constraint path to the prefix. So that's just a new flag need to be introduced. Um, once this new flag to be introduced, and then the as an egress node, it can advertise the um, the cost, the aggregate cost, um, which include the uh, like a low uh, low index. May the e egress node may measure the the package to the node or from the node from the prefix to the prefix and also including the site preference and other uh, um, other pr parameters, they compute uh, aggregate cost. And this cost can be um, advertised. Uh, so um, in OSPF V2, um, uh, we can add a new sub TLV to be added into the extended prefix TLV to indicate the cost. Um, in OSPF 3 V3, um, that uh, uh, 
a same new um, sub TLB can be um, appended to the extended um, uh, prefix um, LSA, which is the start in eighty three. Let's get let's get to people. I think you're at the end. Let's get to the people in the queue. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because you want feedback, so more. here's your feedback. Cool. <laughs> Shraddha? Yeah, Linda, thank you for the presentation uh, and, and describing the use case. So from if I understood correctly, what you're trying to do is to you have multiple application servers. They are represented using an any uh, single any cast address. And then you mm -hmm. really want to load balance the traffic onto these um, application servers. So to me, it looks like it's a problem of um, load balancing onto the servers. and. Uh, uh, probably yes. what I feel is metric probably is not the right way because the moment you change the metric based on load or preference or whatever, your traffic gets skewed towards that metric. And then you have an oscillation, right? Then you have more uh, UEs connecting to this particular servers because this metric uh, looks better. So uh, because you're describing this as a load balancing problem, what I think you really want to do is to uh, use the factors that you have uh, described, like the load, the preference, and the um, site cost, etc., to compute the balance uh, uh, and, and use it as a load balancing mechanism, basically unequal load balancing on ECMP any cost prefix. But, uh, uh, Rada, how, do, how do you do that? So uh, Linda wants to use the network function, the routing function, to do the load balancing. How do you do that without using a metric? Yeah, so that makes me think this. Pro I mean, you the can do it with PGs. You're right. I mean, the hysteresis here are very important, right? Because so, if, so, if, so if Chris, you add I, one, if you add one client to the thing, and then the metric changes, and then you're bouncing back and forth between the two sites, yeah. right? For each client that gets added, so you have to put some kind of hysteresis on this so that that doesn't happen. But eventually, that is what you want to happen, right? That's load balancing. You know, going back and forth between the two, you just maybe don't want it to happen on a per client, you know, per one use. Um, exactly. Yeah. So to me, it appears that it's a load balancing problem, and you know, changing metric doesn't really isn't really going to solve the problem. So I think it there is, there, there are other ways of doing it, uh, and even IGP, right? The load balancing is generally done on next hop. Uh, <laughs> equal next stops that you can do load balancing you can do unequal load balancing as well but uh, on an any cast prefix well, that is, is multi this is a novel away. idea i mean this she, she's come up with a novel idea right it's it's moving the load balancer using harnessing the route function for for load balancing so you it's hard to come up with counter examples if it's novel can i jump the queue my comments will be related to this discussion yeah we're actually out of time so everyone else go fast i guess Thank you very much. And we can continue our discussion on the mailing list. So, so, so I, I just had one, uh, I mean, uh, two quick comments, Linda. The first one is it looks like as the draft evolved, you forgot to re remove sections eight and nine, the one on the link metric and the one on the stub, uh, stub link that gives a nod to the stub link draft, which is also, a, I think you want to remove those two sections. Can you, you look at that? Yes. Yes, yes. I, I have to move a few sections um, because uh, just last few days discussion with Peter and uh, uh, I shrink the slides, but I haven't got a chance to. Um, okay, update the, the draft. Metrics. And the other yes. one is if you're not using the raw metrics, if you're just using a, a, an aggregated metric, you can do this today with, I mean, irrespective of all the problems with load balancing using routing that uh, Shraddha and Chris were discussing. Uh, you could do it just with base OSPF. Just make them ex the AnyCast address an external route and use a type two metric. That's your ag for the external metric. That's your type two metric there, and it all works anyway. But if you're going to use the raw metrics and okay. have constraints on those, that would be more of a more of a discussion we can have on the list. We got to move to Jing. It's we're we're one hundred percent we're one hundred percent on a slop at this point. So uh, next presentation. Thank you. Linda, and Thank we'll you. take the, the rest of the list. Okay. Jing, uh, you're ready. There we go. 
Perfect. I'm going to bring it down to eight minutes. If you could try to pull it in that way, we have time for discussion. Hello, everyone. I'm Xixin from Huawei. My topic is IGP extension for past MTU. Next slide. We know that SR leverage the source routine mechanism and the process MPRS libraries or SR value side in the packet header. However, the current mechanism in SR do not have the specific pass contractor signaling so that the pass MTU information cannot be abandoned in advance. Therefore, it cannot be ensure that the packet size is less than the pass MTU. This draft provides the necessary assets and the OSPF attention for advertising the link MTU. Particularly, we define new link MTU sub TRV for both the SS and the OSPF protocols. With the IGP farding process in the distributed signaling, all the PDP transmission to the controller, the ingress node, or the controller is able to compute the pass MTU for the SR policy. For the SS attention, we define we define a new sub TRV called link MTU sub TRV to carry the MTU of the interface associated the link. The link MTU is advertised as an optional sub TRV of the six rider market TRVs. The last of the types field. The last, field, the last field and the value field are one byte, one byte, and two byte respectively. The type values need to be determined. For the OSPF attention, we define new sub TRV called link MTU sub TRV for OSPF V2 and OSPF V3 to carry the MTU of the interface associated with the link. For OSPF V2, the link MTU is advertised as an optional sub TRV of the OSPF V2 attend link TRV in the OSPF V2 attend link opaque LSA. For OSPF V3, the link MTU is advertised as an optional sub TRV of the root link TRV in the OSPF V3 e router LSA. The last of the type field, the, the last field and the value field are all two batters. The types values for OSPF V2 and OSPF V3 can be different and need to be determined. After sub submitting th this draft, we received some feedbacks. Thanks for these feedbacks. According to these feedbacks, first, the title IDP attention for link MTU may be more appropriate. Second, the OSPF TRV need to be bounded to four batters, and thus a two better received field is pounded before the MTU value field as the following format. Okay, that's okay. all. Yeah. Well, thank uh, you for your listening. Any question? Uh, I, um, it looks like there's a couple people in the line. I would just uh, throw out the comment that after reading it, I think your tie break should just be lowest MTU and forget all that stuff about encoding IDs and all that. Um, go ahead, Jeff. Okay, thank you. Some questions. We have three minutes still. Jeff, Jeff Haas, you're. Sorry, the... I was fighting with my microphone. Yeah, okay. 
Uh, so my criticism is not specifically targeting you know, how do we carry this inside of uh, the protocol mechanism. Uh, my comment to you is that the general issue that we seem to run into in the real world is that we can't believe what the protocols are telling us in a lot of cases. So I know that you want to carry this stuff in you know, the IP to signal you know, to some front end, here's what my path should actually be. Whether you believe it or not, it's actually far more tricky. You know, it's having uh, the, the graph of the individual MTUs for the links will give you roughly the same type of information. My suggestion to you is you know, please take a look at the contents of the very simple BFD draft uh, that's exposed here. It can be carried in things like SBFD. The general problem that you're going to have is uh, you're told the uh, path MTU is X, but some component link that may be part of that path, part of a backup link, part of a fast uh, reroute scenario. Pick any number of scenarios. The path MTU is not going to be you know, what you actually are told that it is. And it's important to not trust that. That's my comment. Thank you. My turn. Yep. Yeah. Um, so uh, I share Jeff's concerns. Um, I have a, a limited enthusiasm for this draft, but uh, in re my comment is in regards to ISIS, if the working group decides to move forward with this draft, there are already uh, two code points that potentially can be used to advertise this. Uh, one of them. Uh, particularly the per link advertisement was defined by Trill. Uh, it would require a bit of adaptation to be used uh, in this context, but I think it's quite feasible. So uh, I'd like us not to allocate yet another code point if we decide to move forward with this for ISIS. Thanks. Thanks, Les. Uh, AC. Santeo. Yeah, yeah, we've got my comment speaking to working member is we've got a, a long without this for decades it seems like just a protocol you know bringing this in because it's it can be done i don't know i looked at the use case of sr and what i would typically do is you definitely you don't you know if you want to generate mtus uh i would just take the lowest one in the in the whole domain and use that as my sending them to you so I could make sure that any opposed labels, you, you know, I think that's are, what they're, that's what they're kind of doing. They're kind of doing. Okay. But then you don't, then you don't, then you need it. Then you just use a capability and do it, do it on a, a do it on a node basis instead of a link basis. That'd be a different way to do it. Yeah. The other okay. Well, this, these are good. These are good list comments. Um, they are, I, they are. I, I'll throw I'll throw out there that you know we we're tunneling like crazy in the last yeah. you know five years or so so we that that's getting true, that's worse it's getting worse and worse but yeah anyway th these are good let's have the discussion on the list it's a new draft sounds uh, good thanks Jing um all right we might be back on time almost um Ren so, so. maybe not it's my turn hello. Please? Yeah. I'm oh. filming. Yeah, Zhao. Oh, sorry, I skipped you. Okay, you, you go. Sorry. Okay, that's all right. Can you see my slides? Yes. yes. I'm going to cut good. you down to eight minutes as well, just to make sure we get in questions. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's Xiaomi speaking. This presentation is on uh, signaling flow ID label capabilities and the flow ID readable label depth using IGP and the BGP LS. And this is the first time I present this individual draft. Uh, the latest version is 01. Okay, uh, this is a short draft. Uh, the intention of this draft is to define a mechanism to signal the FALC and the FRLD using IGP and the BGP LS. Here, FALC stands for uh, Flow ID Label Capability, which is the ability to process Flow ID labels 
Here, FRLD stands for uh, flow ID readable label depth, which is the capability of reading the maximum MPLS label stack depth and uh, performing flow ID label based performance measurement. Uh, we, we already have RFC uh, 9088 that defines the mechanism to signal entropy label capability and entropy uh, readable label depths using ISS and the BGP LS. And we also already have RFC uh, 80, uh, 9089 that defines the mechanism to signal entropy label capability and entropy uh, readable label depths using OSPF and the BGP LS. Uh, this chapter is written uh, modeling after the two RFCs. Uh, this chapter uh, results from an MPS working group document that's called the uh, chapter IETF, MPS inbound PM encapsulation. Uh, in that document, uh, flow ID label and its usage are defined. This figure gives an example format of MPS data packet that includes flow ID label. Uh, in this example, flow ID label is present twice within the label stack, and each flow ID label uh, follows a composite special purpose label, uh, CSPL. Each CSPL is composed of two labels. They are extension table label and uh, flow ID label indicator. Uh, considering the size of the whole label stack uh, in later revision of this uh, MPS document, the CSPL may be changed to a BSPL, a base special purpose label, or BSPL plus a bitmap. Uh, anyway, that potential change uh, won't affect the availability of this draft. Uh, this slide uh, demonstrates how to advertise FAOC by ISS. A uh, one bit uh, FAOC flag is borrowed from the prefix attribute flags that's defined in RFC uh, 7794. The borrowed FAOC flag is bit uh, number four, which is next to the ELC flag, uh, defined in section three of RFC uh, 9088. Are you going to comment now, Chris, on that, on this? I was just getting in the queue. Okay. Um, because you only have three minutes left, I don't think you have to necessarily go through every um, encapsulation here. Okay. Um, maybe just stick to the main points. Okay, I see. I can uh, skip all the encapsulation. I mean, just talk about what you're advertising. Um, you know, I think it's important to point out that you're advertising it per prefix because that's going to come up. <laughs> yeah. So this chapter just uh, uh, model after the RFC uh, 1988 and 1989 uh, to advertise the flow ID label capability and the uh, uh, flow ID uh, read readable. Uh, Label, let, label depth using RGP and BGP LS. So that's the intention. That's the point. Yeah. Um, okay. So is that your last slide? I, thought... I can go to my last slide. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Um, so, so this is this is pretty new. Uh, my I'll, my comments are quick. Uh, you you. I don't know why you did prefix. You say it's useful, but whatever. We can talk about that on the list. But you, you also say that every interface has to support it. So it's almost like when you propose to like somebody, uh, I'm going to sell you a car for a billion dollars, and then they say that's ridiculous. I'll give you five hundred. I wonder if you're trying to like get it in there 
<laughs> by doing that. Anyway, I, my, my main comment is if this doesn't have to do with routing, um, this the audio is not clear to me. Sorry, Chris. The audio what? is not clear to me. Okay, yeah, never mind the first comment. The second comment is if it doesn't have to do with routing, it shouldn't be in the IGP. So unless the FLC is affecting forwarding, it's it's a management thing and it should be somewhere else is my my opinion as a working group contributor but you know just like i fit came into the working group and they wanted to do things that didn't have to do with forwarding they wanted to signal capabilities that didn't have to do with forwarding i think that violates what an ig uh, igp should be advertising right that's my opinion working group chair uh, not as a working chair i understand chair. yeah i understand your point Okay. Uh, FALC is used for performance management. It's not uh, uh, for direct forwarding. You are right. Right. Yeah, uh, that's what I read. But I want to let other okay. people talk. Uh, AC or L L AC in the last. Yeah, mine's real quick. I'm going to try and state your first comment more simply. RFC 9088 and 9089 advertise uh, this MPLS capability these MPLS capabilities on a link and node level, yet you put it at the prefix level. I don't know why you put it at the prefix level. It seems like this should be, have a similar form and structure to those two RFCs as opposed to advertising things on a prefix. And we can uh, talk I about can this on the list. Yes, I, I can check, it, check that. Thank you, thank you, AC. Les? So first, yeah. So first off, uh, I agree with Chris's comment uh, about this not necessarily being appropriate for the IGP. Um, I think the mystery about why uh, you've chosen uh, prefix reachability is you've been misled by the entropy drafts because we had a special case there where we wanted to advertise entropy capability out of the area. And so we needed to use a prefix reachability advertisement to do it, but it's really a node property. And what you're talking about here is also a node property. So if we were to advertise it, it, it should go into router capabilities. But uh, okay, I again, I, I, I agree with Chris's comment that this may not be appropriate for the IGP. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Les. All right, thanks y'all. Uh, we gotta move on. Thank so you. up next is uh, the Anikas property, Ron. Wow, ready to go. Bang. I wonder why this one's taking longer. I see that. Okay, very, very quiet. Okay. Uh, I, I yeah, probably too down. quiet. Can you get closer to the mic? Turn up your yes. volume. Yes. Okay. Yeah, much Hi. better. Yeah, much okay. better. Thank you. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Zach from DTE. Today, I would like to talk about uh, updates to any cost property advertisement for ispf on behalf of co-author next oh sorry e? sorry i can't I, I can't control my slide have a, a arrow key on your keyboard oh oh oh, oh, oh yeah yeah okay, okay. <laughs> i found the button okay um yes this is the uh, motor reasons um both both SMPS prefix seed and IPv4 IP, and IPv6 prefix may be configured as any cast, and as such, the same value can be advertised by multiple daughters. So it is very useful for other daughters to know that the advertisement is for an any cast identifiers. FC uh, 7684 defines OSPF v2 uh, OPIC. LSA based on TLA that can be used to associate additional attributes with prefix or links. 
8-bit field of the OSPF V2 extended prefix TLV is used to ad advertise ad additional attributes associated with the prefix, but the definition of any cast flag to identify the prefix as any cast has not yet been defined. And however, three bits have been defined. Um, for FC 8362 extends the ILSA format by encoding the existing OSPF V3 ILSA information uh, in TLV and, uh, for al and uh, allowing advertisement of additional information with additional TLV. Um, each prefix is advertised along with an 8-bit eight field of capability by using the prefix options. But the definition of any cast flag to identify the prefix as any cast has not yet been defined. Um, and however, only the final bit in the prefix options is not used. Um, so this document updates, up, updates RFC um, 7684 and RFC 8362. And we introduce a wire a, a wire a viable length prefix attribute TLV for both OSPF V2 and V3 uh, that can be reused in multiple or different LSA and as, as sub TLV. And we also introduce a new flag, uh, uh, any cast flag in the prefix attribute sub TLV to advertise uh, the any cast pro pro property. And the, uh, this flag is for the uh, wearable uh, length prefix attribute sub TLV. Um, so, in, uh, so in the case of OSPF V2, the prefix attribute sub TLV is a sub TLV of the OSPF V2 extended prefix TLV as defined in RFC 7684. And in the case of uh, OSPF V3, the prefix attribute sub TLV is a sub TLV of the inter air prefix TLV, inter air prefix TLV, and external prefix TLV. For the next slide, is, is for the uh, attribute, the, the, the definition of attribute TLV. Um, for, OSP, uh, for the OSPF V2, uh, the following uh, uh, the following flag precedes the first figure uh, has been de defined, and the first eight bit are reserved for the previously uh, defined USPF V2 extended prefix TLV. Um, for the N, um, um, for the A and the N bit, please refer to RFCs uh, seven eight uh, seven six eight four. And E bit, please refer to RFC uh, 9089. And uh, uh, in this document, we define a new flag, AC flag. Uh, and the new flag is used to advertise any cast property. Uh, in the case of OSPF V3, uh, please see the figure uh, two. And uh, also, the first eight bit are reserved for the pro previously defined USPF V3 prefix options and the AC uh, flag is used to advertise any cast pro properties. Um, so, uh, uh, the, uh, so we have defined uh, the, the following uh, processing rules, processing rules for AC flag. The first is when the prefix is configured as any cast, the AC flag should be set uh, otherwise, this flag must be clear. And the second is, if both N flag and AC flag are set, the receiving routers must ignore the N flag. And the, sec uh, the third is, AC flag must be preserved when the prefix is propagate propagated to, uh, between areas. And the last is, the same prefix can be advertised by multiple routers, and that if any uh, at least one of them sets the AC flag in its advertisement. The prefix should be considered as any cast. Uh, in the last the last slide, sorry, the last slide is for um, the procession rules um, about the prefix attribute sub TLV. Uh, the first is if there is a device uh, in this network that don't support the existence of the prefix attribute sub TLV, then the de device that supports the prefix attribute sub TLV should 
advertise the field of the capability of the uh, prefix by using prefix options or prefix flags and the prefix attribute sub TLV. Otherwise, only use the prefix attribute sub TLV to advertise the field of capability of the prefix. And the, the, the second is the pref, if prefix is advertised along with the field of capability by using the prefix attribute sub TLV, then the field of capability of the uh, prefix in the prefix attribute sub TLV uh, shall prevail. And as long as the prefix attribute sub TLV is used to advertise the field of capability and the device supports the prefix attribute sub TLV, then the field of capability in the prefix attribute sub TLV uh, should be prevail. And the last if if uh, is if prefix is is advertised along with the field of capability by using only the prefix options or prefix uh, flags, then the field of capability in the prefix options or prefix uh, flag, flags shall prevail. Uh, prevail. Yes, this is our priority system. That's all. Thank you. Uh, and request request review and feedback from a uh, working group. AC I guess Europe. I'm at the top of the queue. AC Lindum speaking as member. Uh, the first question is, what is the use case for any cast? I thought the whole idea was the uh, is is that it was um, that it was transparent. The routers didn't know that it was in it, the prefix of any cast. And the second comment I have, you say that you would not have to use the former if you use this variable length advertisement. You wouldn't have to use the former. That's not the case because. You still have to. You still should set it for the existing flags for backward compatibility, because uh, the uh, it's part of the prefix in both cases, in both for both uh, seventy six eighty four and uh, the OSPF B three one eighty three sixty two or whatever it is. The, the 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 prefix options in the case of OSPF V3 and the and the flags field in the case of OSPF uh, V2 extended prefix is part of the the same field that has the address. So you really have to see. So you can't you can't not use it. Yeah. My, so says. my my comment is actually the same. I think this maybe we need to go over this on the list. But when I, I when I read the um, you know the sort of transition that that last slide talked about uh, to me it sounded wrong at least when i read yeah. the document it was like it preferring like the new advertisement over the old one uh, is is almost always wrong right because the the, the non-implementers or the people that don't understand it are picking something different but i could have misread it either case i think that needs some review on the list i, th I think i think and and it, and it actually said you could admit it you can't admit it because the flag is there. You might as well set it correctly, yeah, and and have that in the draft. Yeah, yeah. unless yeah. Okay. So yeah. anyway, but more on the list on that. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you. Uh, oh, and, and more on, and more on exactly what the use case is for having other routers know this is an AnyCast address. Okay. You can answer that on the list too. What Benji? the use case is. All right, you're up and you're ready. There's the slides. I shouldn't be in the queue. All right, you're up. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, OK. OK. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. My topic is easy, easy extensions for link bit error ratio. As we know, in certain networks, uh, network performance criteria are becoming as critical as other metrics to data plan selection. And uh, this draft uh, describes uh, the extensions to easy traffic engineering metric extensions. Uh, this draft uh, provides the necessary easy extensions about the link bit error ratio. 
that may need to be need to be used to describe network performance. As other is these T metric extensions, for example, the unidirectional link loss and the unidirectional link delay. Uh, the unidirectional link beta ratio is also meant to be used as part of the operation of the routing protocol to enhance CSPF or for other uses, such as supplementing the data used by the controller to compute the policy path. As shown in, in this diagram, the number first pass is a normal IGP pass, uh, which has the shortest metric. And we may notify the link bit error ratio of every link by the router to the con controller using BPRS. And the controller will calculate a policy pass, which has the lower link bit error ratio, as shown by number two pass, so that different services may use different paths. And this slide, uh, as sh and this slide, we define the unidirectional link bit error ratio sub TLE to carry the link bit error ratio of the interface associated with the link. The link bit error ratio must be the packet bit error from the local neighbor to the remote neighbor. And this sub TLE is advertised as an optional sub TLE of neighbor TLE in RSP. The format is shown here. It is similar to unidirectional link loss sub TLE. And the type is to be defined. The length is a constant value, four. And we define one byte flex and only use one bit here. We call anomalous bit and a bit. The a bit is set when the measured value exceeds this configured maximum threshold and will be cleared when the value falls below its configured reuse threshold. Uh, and we use uh, three bytes to carry link bit error ratio. Uh, so we have a basic unit as shown here. And uh, so that the maximum value we can advertise is almost 50%. Uh, here we have two assume. We assume that pre precision is more important on high speed uh, links than the ability to advertise a greater value than this. And uh, the, the second is the high speed links with over 50% bit error are unusable. Yeah, thank, thank you, thank you everyone. And uh, I hope uh, to get comments for, from my list. Thank you. Any question? Yeah, I have a question. What bit error rate? Okay. Is this is this um, prefect or postfect? Is it is it before correction or after correction? Uh, it, I think it is before correction. Right. So th this is hard. Uh, I, I mean, I know what you're going for here is basically link quality, a different measurement of link quality. Um, my experience, uh, the operator I've worked for was a Deutsche Telekom, right? So it was way up high in the pecking order. And we worked on a new, uh, new network. And for us, any post fact bit error rate meant you took the thing out of service. There was no percentage. Any prefect bit error rate, unless it was immediately spiking, just meant the thing was working, right? I mean, if, if, you, have a, if you have a zero bit error rate post-fec, you have no packet loss due to bit errors. 
right? And if you have, if you have, if you do have a post fact bit error rate, then at least the operator I work for, you just stop using that link altogether. Now there on all the routers, there's there's you know alarms and different things that can watch this stuff. I, I'm just not sure uh, how useful this is. I'm interested in hearing from other people and other specifically, you know, uh, either other operators at the, you know, sort of default free, but also, you know, maybe does this have some kind of application in lossier networks? I, I don't know, but um, I, I, I'm worried that this is too, too fine of a grain to be looking at on the routing level. Yeah, I'll just I'll just come in there. Speaking as working group member, I see the encoding looks fine. I mean, it's similar to the other uh, extended uh, TE metrics that we spent a lot of time on years ago. But I'm wondering what bit error rate offers you over and above packet loss. They seem like they're you know basically uh, both at a high level metrics of you know the link quality and really it seems like that what's delivered the packet loss is a more important metric than the the lower level at the you know at layer one the bit error rate the physical layer so i i uh i i, I don't really see the need the advantage of it and would like to hear from other operators yeah, Randy agreed with me in the chat that um, you know if you if you see post fact bit errors, you just take it out of service. Yeah. So just this is all just echoing the same thing, right? And then AC is saying the same thing. Uh, we'll take it to the list, but uh, this may not be that useful. We'll see. Too much information, right? <laughs> so the question now yeah. is: Do we want to try and load Ajun's? uh stub link or advertisement presentation quickly or not yeah i i don't know we only have two minutes but uh yeah why not let's do it okay my dog's waiting for me to take her for a walk you can see her in the background i'm sure <laughs> I can't see the screen. Yes. Yes. No, no. But I cannot see the screen. Oh, okay. I'll stop. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let, let's. Uh, so this is the advertise of the Starlink attribute. So, uh, so there are many play um, many situations. Uh, the sub interface interface are used commonly in network, but currently. There is no suitable place to advertise the staff interface and their associated uh, attributes. And uh, we, we also investigated the existing possible solution. And uh, uh, there is no uh, country, there is no suitable place. So we think it is necessary to extend the OSPF and the IS protocol to transfer the staff link and their related attributes. And uh, the update. Uh, Content for the current uh, draft is uh, uh, based on the discussion on the main list. We, we, we find that the inter TE LSA uh, in OSPF and the inter S reachability TLV in ISS is a suitable place to contain such information. So we define the uh, sub link TLV or, uh, or and the sub TLV uh, to carry the associated attribute uh, within the OSPF and the I, uh, ISS. And we also uh, define the link type for the sub sublink because there are various uh, types of the sublink. So we can we need to further uh, distinguish them. And uh, the other existing sub TLV for the link attribute can be reused. Uh, and we also uh, can discuss the other TLV that is uh, the, there is a link TLV defined in RFC. 36, 30, 30. Uh, and we, we also investigate whether can, uh, this TLV can be, can be used or not. And we think uh, the such TLV, link TLV uh, should be uh, 
um, mainly used for the link within the ITP protocol, but the sublink is not in the ITP protocol. And uh, and the if we use such sub TLV, the link type uh, within the within such 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 TLV should uh, should also be should be extended. And uh, there is no sub TLV to describe the prefix that uh, associated with the sublink. So uh, based on this consideration, we think. Uh, uh, it is fine to define a new, uh, a new TLV, similar TLV, uh, to uh, contain the information for the sublink. <coughs> okay, this is the the update, the content and the update of this draft. We, uh, I think, uh, it also discussed on the main, uh, intensely on the main list. We we also ask for the uh, working group to adopt. Okay, so thank uh, you. yeah, Linda, go ahead. <laughs> This draft seems like we can use that for distribute the aggregate cost as well. So I'm curious, um, what's the step link? How's the different from like a prefix LSA? Um, like if, is the step link is always for prefix? Uh, no, no, I, I, I think uh, the step link can, uh, can be used to connect many, uh, uh, many prefix, you know, for example, in, in your, in your use case for the 5G edge computer, uh, uh, I think the sublink is some, is a link that's uh, located on the boundary of the, of the 1S. So, yeah, that, uh, that's, so an that's the, that's the interesting case. Like we're out of time. I, I'm always, I don't know whether we, it's appropriate or not to run over. Um, I think virtual we can, um, run over a little bit, but um, it's a little bit better than when you're in No, it will, it will, will not be cut and, uh, automatically. So we, if we have time, we can discuss it continuously. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I would encourage people to talk about this on the list. This is another one where I don't think we're going to do an adoption call right now because, you know, um, I think there's still some questions as to whether it's needed. I know as a contributor, I, I don't see why it's needed, but, um, you know, I, that's just me as a contributor, but I'd like to see some more discussion on the list about this. Um, particularly if people have ideas about how to, how to, um, identify stub links without a TLB, right? I, cause I think that could be done. So then we wouldn't need this, but anyway, more on the list um and i think that's it for presentations yeah um, I, I, i'm just, I'm just going to add i think the encoding now in the where it is as a t you know for its original purpose was for enter aste it's in the right place and the encoding is fine it, the question from my standpoint now is whether people think this additional uh link type and information is useful for te We, we, we have right. university. Yeah, we have I mean, university, other, pe but... other people than the offers. People other than the offers think <laughs> no information is useful. That's uh, what I think we need to buy. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, everybody. Um, any thanks. other comments? We do have this virtual time, so uh, then we'll want to throw some tomatoes at us or. Hopefully, we'll be meeting in Europe. I know they're they're hoping. Uh, in March, I think that would be uh, that'd be really good if we could meet face to face and have you know impromptu side meetings and all the things we're uh, missing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. I think it was a Thanks good meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>You know, I, actually, I, how much time do they give us? Because, you know, usually we hang around at the table a few minutes, <laughs> right? Like, is that, maybe we should use our overtime for that kind of, it, they want us to go to gather, I think, right? Uh, I think I, I got another plan. It's recorded here, so. <laughs> yeah.
Um, it's not recorded at the end of the session when you just gathered around the chair table. Uh, John says running over is not ideal. I agree. That, that's okay. always been my thought. Is that people need to plan, and it disadvantages people that have other things to do. All right, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks.